zweite Runde startet jetzt mit Dr. Nontando Hadebe, da ist sie schon. Sie ist aus Johannesburg in Südafrika angereist. Sie ist internationale Koordinatorin der interreligiösen Bewegung Side by Side, die sich für Geschlechtergerechtigkeit einsetzt und Genderberaterin bei Brot für die Welt. Sie moderiert eine wöchentliche Radiosendung bei Radio Veritas in Südafrika. Sie ist nicht das erste Mal in Deutschland. Sie war im vergangenen Jahr sechs Wochen Fellow-Gastdozentin bei Ute Leimgruber an der Universität Regensburg. Sie ist ebenfalls im Catholic Women's Council aktiv und dort im Executive Board für Afrika. Liebe Nontando, du bringst Ergebnisse aus synodalen Gesprächen in Afrika mit. Erwartungen und Erfahrungen, die Frauen in Afrika an ihre Kirche richten. Wir sind sehr gespannt auf deine Ausführungen. Thank you very much. I just want to do an illustration. Uh, can I have the mic so that I can do it? Um, hello, is that, is this, is it working? Yeah, okay. Uh, no, no, it's not on. I just want to make an illustration before I come here. Yeah. So many times when people think of African women, it's always like. Not speaking, waiting, passive, uh, constantly obedient, just all wrapped up. But I want to say that the reality is not this. And I want to begin, and I need to stay here to illustrate what I want to say, is that when we're thinking, I think many of us know the three-legged African pot. I think we've seen it with three legs. Yes, and I always call that the three C's of African women's life. Firstly, the first C is the constitution the human rights, you know, African women were active in the liberation against colonialism. So they are active, they are agents, they act, they speak. So against colonialism, if we think about Zimbabwe, it was Muya Nehanda, the spirit of liberation. If we think about South Africa, it's the Women's March. So right there in the pursuit of justice, African women were part of that whole movement for justice. And so in the constitutions that we have, we find that there is, like my brother was saying, there is that pursuit of equal participation of women. In fact, the country with the highest participation of women is in Africa, and that's Rwanda. 65% of the parliamentarians are women. So why am I doing this? It's just to correct the perception of African women being passive, uh, being just, you know, not active at all. And so we see, and I'm going to come back to the violence just now. So we see under the constitution, African women given equal rights. Then the second C is the culture. All these Cs are all connected. And the problem, as you will see, is that they are not, they are in conflict hence the violence. So we have culture. So on a Monday, the African Monday to Friday, you go to work. In that workplace, you are told you are equal. The constitution is working. The, what, wherever you are working, you are being empowered to leadership. They tell you that leadership is accessible to you. So that's your reality. You come to the second seat, which is your culture. Our culture, as my brother said, the language doesn't have gender. And many times, because it's communitarian, if you look at African traditional religions, they are communitarian. Everything is communitarian. So you have both a liberating part, and then you also have a, a patriarchal oppressive part. So you've got this conflict, okay? And, 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 and we're always asking, who is defining culture? 
who is saying this is what a woman should do and this is what a woman should not do. So after Monday to Friday, in a highly uh, context where you are being told there's no glass ceiling, on Saturday you go to a cultural event and you are told, oh, you are a woman, go and sit there. If you are a man, go and sit there. Things start to change. And then on Sunday, you come to for mass. And uh, at the whole, you just, everything is male from the, you know, the artwork, the leadership, you know, so, so, so all of a sudden, okay, this doesn't fit with that. Uh, this doesn't fit with here. So your life is just not balanced because of the conflicting messages that a woman gets as normal. And so like what my brother said here, the society is like up to here, the culture may be here, the church definitely behind. So, 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 this is, so what he's saying in the Philippines is also the same here, where the government, even when we're talking about gender-based violence, it was the president of South Africa who said, this is a national crisis. And he came uh, to the women's movement and he said, this is a national crisis, we're going to act. And then he started that, and then later uh, they said, oh, let's involve the church. It didn't come from us. That should have been something that comes from us because we talk about the dignity of all people. We talk about justice. And yet because of this inequality, there is no capacity to talk about these things and there's no leadership. Because to exclude women is already a spiritual violence. To exclude women from rep representation is already a spiritual violence. So I just wanted to illustrate these conflicting realities on a daily basis that are the, 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 the reason why there's so much violence uh, against women. And we saw it during COVID, how the gender-based violence went very, very high, you know, and victims don't know if they go to the church, they're sometimes told that you need to suffer like Jesus suffered, that the man is the head of the home, uh, you know, all those type of theologies. So many are afraid to come. But then when they go to the government, they are told you are citizens, it's a crime. To be beaten is a crime. We have not criminalized violence against women. We're not taking it seriously. And yet the government is taking it seriously. So we are in a way behind uh, in terms of gender issues. So now I will go to the real paper. Just hold on. <laughs> I wanted to begin, you know, we also had the same process uh, for, for bringing women together to listen. Uh, but I want to begin with a letter that we sent to women. We ended up with a group of about 170 women uh, listening online and listening in person. But I just wanted to the letter because we were very encouraged by the view of our Archbishop. So this is the letter that we sent to the women participating in the listening circles. We are delighted that you'll be joining us uh, for the diocese phase of the Synod. This is a rare opportunity for us to share our experiences as women. Now this is what the Archbishop said. Uh, the Archbishop Synod's booklet uh, says, the section on women says, an important topic that is in the minds of many women is the topic of patriarchy. The word patriarchy expresses in a nutshell the system of domination of women by men throughout the ages. In the minds of many men, women are still second-class citizens. Today, world over, women are the face of poverty. Crimes against women such as rape, human trafficking, sexual abuse, femicide, inequality in the economy, and many others are directly rooted in attitudes and beliefs about women from time immemorial. The church has not been immune to these attitudes and beliefs. Scripture, the teachings of the church fathers, and the theology of the church need to be critically re-examined. It is imperative that we listen to and respond to the plight of women 
and this is from our archbishop. So he already is the one who is saying, I want you to flag patriarchy. I want you to, in your report, make sure you deal directly with patriarchy. So we had, uh, so we had the support of the archbishop. And then, and then the questions that were asked, in your experience, what is it like to be a woman in the Catholic Church? And what are your particular joys and challenges? Where do you sense the Holy Spirit may be inviting the church at this moment in our history, especially with regard to women? So this is what we sent, the letter from the Archbishop, as well as these sentences uh, for women. So we, we met, and then I'm just going to uh, re read the report. Uh, we came up with 10 uh, what we call recognitions. Um, and we, so, yeah, sorry, 10 recognition. And then the first recognition was to say that women value the church. Then it, so that when we are talking about our critique, it comes from that understanding that for many women, the church has been a place of encouragement, strong spirituality. So we are starting with that point. But with that, we say we want to be recognized as equal. It says, in the equality of women's creation as made in the image of God, in their baptism into the Catholic Church, in their service of the Church and in the world, they claim equality with all men, including clerics. In the life and service of the Church, Vatican II recognizes the laity, which means all women are laity, whose baptismal anointing makes us priests, prophets and kings. So already there is that saying, yes, we acknowledge that the church is important in our lives, but we want to enter as equals. So that was really a point that was made. And then the other one, it says presently, the church denies women's equality and full participation and renders women subservient in parish life. Exactly what you are saying, my brother. So this is our point. And then recognition of charism. The Holy Spirit gives charisms to each of the baptized for the service of the church and its missions. Women want recognition of the legitimacy of the individual uh, charisms to be put at the service of the church. So the, the women are not allowed to preach or carry out the ministry of reconciliation or ordination. So there is that clear, that was us the third. And then recognition of conscience, that was the fourth one. Women want to be allowed, particularly when it comes to issues of, um, you know, uh, sexuality, reproductive health, that type of thing, that conscience is the secret and the sanctuary of the human person. And then the fifth one is recognition of the burden, shame and abuse to women of the moral teachings of the church. The moral teachings of the church weigh disproportionately on women. Unwed women, divorced women, single mothers, LGBTQ, all live with the stigma of judgment from the church, including its clerics. Men who may be responsible uh, for, for pregnant women never suffer the same uh, punishment. And so, we, you know, so this, they, that, that recognition that even the church's teaching on artificial birth control needs to be, um, you know, needs to be challenged as well. Um, adhering to natural family planning resulted in women bearing four or five children within a space of four years. And guilt continues to weigh on those and others, you know, so this is the reality. Uh, recognition of the need for formation Many women are not knowledgeable about their faith. They don't have theological education and therefore are at the mercy of priests who are the ones who can um, you know, interpret for them. And then I'm just going to go quickly. The seventh one is recognition of missing voices. Those who are differently abled, people with disabilities, aged, poor, most of whom are, are women, need inclusion in the church structures and activities. Victims of gender-based violence, especially in the cases of rape, teenage pregnancy, need support and refuge. 
gender-based violence must be called out in preaching and supportive structures. The LGTBI community must be recognized as full and equal members of the church, deserving respect and allowed full participation in the life and ministry of the church, including blessing of their units. Um, and because this is a, a legal uh, thing in South Africa. So it means the church and the state are not talking to each other. So they are saying, you know, youth are concerned uh, of all mothers who see. And I just want to tell a story re related to this. Um, we had a meeting of all uh, churches uh, to say, how do we deal with violence against LGBTI people? And one mother came up and said to us, when my daughter was born and, I, and she was baptized, I was told she's a gift from God. So I looked after her, I raised her up. And then when she was 26, she came to me and she said, I think, you know, I'm gay. I think I'm a lesbian. So she went to the, the parish priest and they said, that's evil. So she was asking us, how does a gift from God become a gift from the devil? How does she move from being a blessing to being evil? Can you explain that to me? And then she said, I have already made up my mind, irrespective of what you say, I will love my child. And what happened is that her child was uh, raped by nine men and cut into pieces. And she had to go to the police station to identify the body. And then she made up her mind that she will, doesn't want any parent to have to go through what she went through. So she went around, this is an African woman, she went around and said to the, the people in the neighborhood, please, if you have a child in this community, please, let's love our children. That was her own message, let's love our children. These are gifts from God. We may not understand anything, but we need to love them. And, and this is really where the message was coming from. Let's be identified as people who love and respect, even things we don't understand. Let's love and respect people. So this is what the women were saying, because these are our children. We carry them for nine months, uh, like we carry other children. So why are we being forced to neglect them? And then uh, recognition of the need to address clerical abuse and incompetence. Um, and then recognition of the call to orders. Women are called by the Holy Spirit to orders in the church, and they must be allowed to have that call discerned, recognized and ritualized formally within the church. Recognition of ongoing structures of support. Many women express the desire to continue uh, to dialogue with other women as in these synodical groups to support each other. And then we had the questionnaire. Only 10% of respondents, um, yeah, so, yeah, so let me go straight to the findings. Um, 63% of the women, of the 190 women, have a role in the parish. Uh, 20, 22 have experienced psychological abuse, 23 spiritual abuse, 44 power abuse, and 53 a sense of invisibility and lack of appreciation. Women name the following issues as needing urgent attention. Number one, participation in democracy in the church, the issue of clericalism, the issue of inclusion and equality, the issue of sexual and power abuse, the issue of violence against women, the issue of theology and women in the world, uh, the issue of sexual and marital ethics. Women identified the following characteristics of the church as patriarchal, ordained ministries restricted to men, absence of women in church leadership roles, that's 83%, sacraments provided only by men, 71%, and masculine images of God, 61%. Um, only 15% consider communications in the church free and transparent. Um, and then it says almost 60% think that the liturgy helps a lot, but many of them uh, say that women need uh, to be uh, given the participation. Um, and, so, and so what we can see from here uh, is the need to recognize women's ability, uh, the inclusion of women into the priesthood, and also those experiences. So in conclusion, I think based on uh, listening uh, 
uh, to women and um, is to say that we really are behind in terms of what is happening in our society, women moving forward. So when we come to our parishes, it's like we are going into two centuries behind, you know, patriarchy and exactly what my brother was saying. So we need to bridge the gap. We need to make sure that... <laughs> Uh, we need to make sure that when a woman is in society and told about her equality and access and being able to function according to her gifts, she hears the same message in the culture that she's part of the community, she's here to, you know, to, to participate as an equal, and she needs to hear the same message uh, in the parish so that the life is whole, so that violence can be addressed, and so that our lives are integrated. Thank you. Ganz herzlichen Dank, Nontando Hadebe. Wir haben interessante Parallelen schon gehört, gefunden, die Ganzheit des Lebens und Sie haben gesprochen von der Ganzheit der Kirche, von einer Vision von Kirche, in der ganzes Menschsein und ganze Gemeinschaft ähm, erlebt werden können. Wir haben star ein starkes Statement gehört zur Situation, zur Selbst- und Fremdwahrnehmung von Frauen, von Gewalterfahrungen und immer wieder von der ambivalenten Rolle, die die Kirche in diesen Bezügen spielen kann.